Next up is the VCF resonance. Now the VCF resonance uh, is actually uh, using this j jumper block here and working backwards. So this is voice one, voice two, voice three, voice four. But because I've got my calibrator kit, all I had to do was turn this all the way up to voice number one on the other side, and I'm going to work backwards. Uh, the program to load is program three, not program four, so this other side of the thing actually is used in program three, my mistake from earlier on when I said it was a program four thing. So I have got program three selected, all right? And this is basically a filter oscillating program, and I am listening to... Again, I have I have the headphones. I have some headphones plugged into the audio out, so you're going to faintly hear it. Um, but I'm going to hit C4. That's what they say to hit on the keyboard, key bed. So this is one C1, C2, C3, and this is C4 right here. Okay. And what I've noticed is, let's have a look. Here's both our iPad through the camera. Uh, not the camera, but through the microphone connector, showing, uh, and then here is the scope outputs. And if I stop playing, audio output stops, but that signal continues to be transmitted through this test point. So uh, you don't need to hold function for this, it actually will continue. So if you want to keep hearing it, uh, then you're going to want the hold function. So uh, important point to note, hold function in this test program is only important if you are using the audio outs and not tapping into these test points on the board. So what do we see here? Now this is one of the things about this scope on the iPad that's very frustrating is you can't adjust the time base from what I can tell. I'm just taking a look at the various settings and it's really quite limited like that. You can't change the time base, you can't change the amplitude scaling, so in a lot of ways it's kind of great for visual but not that useful. Um, over here, up uh, on my scope, I've got its uh, display functions engaged, which is really nice. So I can see that we've got a 49% duty cycle, almost 50%, but really important here is the 4.28 volts peak to peak that's being generated by that. Uh, and then over here, I'm actually seeing a frequency count in Hertz. And over here, uh, the vo this is the voltage RMS, uh, root mean squared, which is kind of an average value uh, of the, uh, the voltage of the, the AC signal. Anyway, not to worry about that one. That's kind of uh, not, neither here nor there. The really important thing here is the volts peak to peak. And we can't, okay, we don't have any display techniques here on this program. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this program and I'm going to go to this other one which I loaded and unfortunately this other guy here only operates in vertical mode. It doesn't have a... and it's fundamentally a frequency meter um, and if I tell it to go it's going to tell me what the detected frequency is. And it says 1593.45, and uh, I look at this, 1.59 kilohertz here. So this actually matches up very nicely. Um, so that's, this is a good app, uh, this one here. Uh, I, I there, I just turn it off there. Uh, and this is basically, it's just a frequency meter, and it'll give you a basic waveform. Uh, and then over here is one called Guitar Tuner. And when I open this guy up, uh, I have to switch him over to the A4 mode, and here it'll actually show me, uh, and this is free, by the way. I think it has a paid upgrade, but so far it hasn't hassled me. This is actually a very nice program. It's the cheapest of the lot, and uh, it'll tune your guitar as well. And it's also, it's also visually sexy, which I always like, because you've seen my editors. You know what I'm into. Uh, but at any rate, uh, as you can see, it's not 100% happening, it, it, it gets a little confused, because it is a guitar tuner, right? So, uh, let's close that guy down, and this is basically what I had going on, so we're, we're back here to, to this guy, who, he's telling us this is 2 meters, milliseconds per division, and this is 100 millivolts per, per division. So you would actually have to pull an analog scope thing and count the, the things, but you, you can't actually calibrate, shift, or move anything, and you can't redefine the scale factors, so this is of limited utility. Um, now, the other scope programs I saw 
were all ones that involved some sort of dock connector that you had to buy uh, that was made by the maker of the app. And that's understandable because for data acquisition you need a high, high quality uh, digital uh, analog to digital converters and so on and so forth, which is one of the reasons why I use this USB scope here. Um, because, of course, it has dedicated hardware for all of that stuff and it came with scope probes already calibrated to work. So just putting this back into the clip mount. Um, that's a RAM mount, by the way, in case you're worry, uh, wondering. I picked it up at NAM. It was uh, one of the booths near us. Uh, those guys from Seattle were there, and they had uh, RAM mounts for pretty much everything. Uh, mixers, um, handheld. I wanted to buy the handheld one, but I didn't have enough money. I bought this one for the pad, the iPad, because that's always a problem for me. And also, I got one for a mixer, small mixer, which was a good deal. I'll have to see about getting the one for the, the handheld. Uh, so that basically... You know, where it is, you know, just the sort of aside there. We've got this going on with the scope nicely and it's displaying everything. So we're going to go with this uh, for the purposes of the next bit of calibration that we're doing. Because um, we're looking for voltage. And this is 4.28 volts peak to peak. And I think we want 4.8 volts peak to peak. And, in fact, I know we want 4.8 volts peak to peak. I've done this enough times. So, once I kind of get back into it, my memory banks reactivate. So, uh, okay. The pots in question um, are right up here. So, VR26, VR21, VR16, VR11. And they're basically the top row of pots. And they balance, and there are six of them. So, the first thing I'm going to do is start adjusting this guy here and I want to see the amplitude changing. Yep, that's beautiful. Okay, I'm going to uh, switch over to the display here so that you can see it in action. Hopefully I'm not going to be blocking it. I'm going to let you see this both okay, like so. And am I going to be in the way? Okay, let me... Okay, you see that? So this is me adjusting. And I'm looking at the screen, and I want it to be 4.8, so I'm just watching this measured value. Okay. That's bouncing between 4.78 and 4.81, and that's generally what it does. So now, click. Uh, I'm uh, now looking at the next voice, and I'm going to adjust that. So my calibrator box, once again, comes in very handy. Point seven eight four point eight one, we are good to go. And I really, you know, now that we've got that going on, you know, you could, you could, I guess, if you had the reference, you could use the iPad one when you switch between. But you need to be able to. Yeah, well, you get the idea. You could see that they were all the same without actually, oh, except that my arm wasn't actually in the way, blocking it the entire thing. Here, I'll do it again. You can see their amplitudes are all similar. But without the precision of the scope and its display, uh, this is of limited utility uh, for our purposes. See, you really do want this volts peak-to-peak -peak display. And uh, 
That's, I'm, so far, I haven't seen that in one of these uh, use the microphone input guys. So uh, that's that. Let's move on. Okay, now we're going to calibrate the VCA gain, and the VCA gain is calibrated by these guys, uh, these ones here. Let me put my hand to the other hand, and they are basically, um, that's VR27, VR22, VR17, and they basically follow the same track as the resonance trimmers. Uh, these are the VCA, VCF resonance trimmers are here along the top row. We just did those. And then these ones here are the VCA gain trimmers, and they are along the bottom. And if we were, weren't were using the calibration box, we would have to move the test probe back to test point one on the leftmost block. But we don't have to do that. As you can see, all I had to do... Uh, all I had to do was rotate my switch here from where it was here uh, on the last test, all the way back, all the way back to position number one on this side. And now I am now doing test point one again uh, on program number three. Now, having done that, remember how I showed you you didn't need a hold function? Well, I'm afraid that when you are testing the VCA gain, press the note, you get the waveform, let go of the note, the waveform disappears. Uh, that is a little bit of a, they're going to fool you a little bit on the, um, on the iPad app because it kind of holds on to like an image of the last wave it had. Uh, see, it does that. So anyway, not a big deal because we're not using this for amplitude calculations anyway. So this guy says 6.34 volts peak to peak right now for this. And, uh, if I, I would have to keep this held down. And as you may or not remember, uh, from the Packrat Juno 106, uh, if you're just using a straight Juno, you can engage a hold function by pressing the Bank B button by selecting Bank B. So the green light is on on the front panel, and that will actually act as a hold down of a foot pedal. Since we don't have that going on in QE106, basically what QE106 can do, and again, this is a V2 firmware thing. In the V2 firmware, uh, you can actually use the hold button on the front panel because there is a dedicated hold button on the Kiwi Technics QE106 redesigned front panel, so if you have the overlay, it's just the hold button. Uh, I am running V.103 right now on this. I'm going to upgrade it to V2 before I send it out to VT, but um, right now I'm calibrating it using V.103. So, uh, here we are. I'm just going to have to hold this down while I adjust the trimmer. Let's see if I can do that without mucking things up too badly. Um, Alright, so it's this guy over here, VR27. And I want to reduce this down to 5 volts peak to peak. So it's going down, going down, going down. Okay. Interesting. I'm seeing way down at the bottom of the trimmer is a 5 volt peak to peak. Um, so moving on to the next one, number two. There we are. These guys are now beautifully calibrated. And it was very easy to do because I've got my fabulous box, which I'm always impressed by. Okay, so can't help it. It's a new toy and I built it. You know, you know that feeling. All right, so let's move on.